There are many unique species on the Galapagos Islands. One is the Galapagos hawk. There are such a large number of unique species on the Galapagos Islands because the islands are isolated out in the Pacific Ocean, six or seven hundred miles west of South America. This archipelago has nurtured the evolution of many unique species. We'll spend some time at Cabo Haman with two scientists who are here for a week to study fur seals. Fur seals make their home in this shoreline of volcanic rocks. The scientists' main interest was the young fur seal pups. The animals at Cabo Haman have not learned yet to fear humans. This is Fritz Trilmick getting ready to film underwater. The fur seals play and search for food underwater. They come up to the surface for air. Another animal unique to the Galapagos Islands is the marine iguana. It comes ashore to mate and lay eggs in the sand. The marine iguana has a big body and tail. It goes into the ocean to feed. It dives using its tail for propulsion and it eats algae. The scientists are studying their social behavior. There's also a land iguana species at Cabo Hammond. Its yellow color makes it distinctive. Its body and head are similar to the marine iguana, but this animal feeds on land. These reptiles probably give us a glimpse of what creatures were like many years ago. There's a species of flightless cormorant that lives here at Cabo Hammond. The bird in this picture is drying out after swimming, diving, and fishing. These cormorants feed close to the shoreline. To catch fish, they dive. One of the surprises here at the equator is a species of penguin, the Galapagos penguin. They seem to use this rocky shoreline for nesting. They are amazingly able to hop from one rock to another. Some of their actions seem almost desperate. They go out into the ocean to fish. The ocean surrounding the Galapagos Islands is rich in fish. Another bird that I rarely saw was what I think is a shearwater. Here we see it feeding by picking food up from the surface of the water. It flutters just above the surface. Its large wings, compared to its body, makes this kind of feeding behavior possible. This is a frigate bird. It has a wide wingspan and can really maneuver in the air. This is a mockingbird, a fearless bird with great curiosity. So, even in this remote, desolate, volcanic area on Fernandina Island, there's a wealth of life. Of all these, the Galapagos hawk impressed me the most. It seemingly was king with no natural enemies and an abundant supply of food. It had no fear of humans. In fact, this hawk seemed to have a particular curiosity about our two scientists. Here, the hawk seems to pose for Inca. This fellow stuck around most days and observed the work of our two researchers, Inca and Fritz Trilmick. 
the population of Galapagos hawks has declined in the Galapagos Islands. There are only an estimated 100 to 200 mating pairs remaining. Here at Cabo Haman, with the huge supply of marine iguanas and the, the absence of human disruption, the hawk is under less survival stress. The diet of the Galapagos hawk is insects, rodents, carrion, and here at Cabo Haman, marine iguanas. This hawk ate only a small part of each carcass, then left it. The hawk had to eat the iguana where it killed it. The carcass was too heavy for the hawk to carry away. Our researchers examined one of the carcasses abandoned by the hawk. The measurements of the animal were taken. The marine iguana was cut open, exposing the three eggs it was carrying. These eggs were carefully removed, prepared, and put in a container for further study when the scientists got back home. When I think back on my stay at Cabo Haman, my most striking memory is of the Galapagos hawk. This has been one part of a five-part series put up on YouTube to show the work of nature scientists in the field. To view other parts of this series, enter the words Cabo Hammond in the YouTube search box.